In this video, let's examine how the calculations were done for this problem. It's a survey of 16 people, uh, and the thing that we're going to measure is how much uh, they spent on their child's last birthday present. We take a sample of uh, a number of them, uh, of those 16, and uh, we look at that average and want to estimate the average of the entire population based on that sample. We want to produce an 80% confidence level interval for this. Let's review the general idea of finding a confidence level. So we've got this distribution of X, which is measuring how much was spent on the child's last birthday present. We were told that the distribution of these um, of, of X was uh, essentially bell-shaped. We're going to take an N to estimate the mean of this population. We don't know the mean, but we'd like to estimate that mean by taking a sample and finding the mean of the sample. So we think about all the samples of this particular size n and look at the distribution of all of those means that were uh, obtained from that. We know that from the central limit theorem that the distribution of those sample means will be normally distributed with the mean of all of the means of all the sample means the mean of the x bars is going to be equal to the mean of that original uh, population furthermore the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample means will be equal to the standard deviation of the original population divided by the square root of n in our case, we don't know what the, what the standard deviation of the original population was, so we'll approximate that with the standard deviation from the sample. So our best estimate of the standard deviation of this distribution of the x bars is going to be the standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root of n. We're looking for an 80% confidence level, so we're going to look at either a t distribution or a z distribution. In our case, we'll need to look at a t distribution because we don't know what the population standard deviation is. We'll center the confidence level in this distribution. So we'll put 80% uh, 0.8 of the entire population in between here. That means that 1 minus 0.8 will be in the sum of these two tails. That means that in either one of these tails, there's got to be 1 minus the confidence uh, level divided by 2. That would be the area that's there. That means that the t value at this little blue mark could be found with the qt function from r. So just so I can write it easier, let me say that this amount, 1 minus the confidence interval divided by 2, is equal to a for that area. So this uh, little blue marker here would, could be found by QT of that area, uh, comma, the degrees of freedom, which is going to be N minus 1 in this particular case. Now, if instead of finding this QT, we found the T value at this red dot, that would tell us the number of standard deviations we need to be away uh, from, the, from the mean uh, to have uh, the, that confidence level. So the value of that red dot will be the negative of this blue dot because of the symmetry of the distribution. So when we took our sample and got a particular x bar, that would have been the point estimate for the mean of the population. If we wanted an 80% confidence level, then we'd put 80% confidence here. We'd calculate what this red value is, and then we could just take that, that red value times this uh, standard deviation and add that to the x bar and subtract that from the x bar to find the uh, confidence, the 80% confidence interval. Okay, let's do those calculations. So let's pull in a copy of our studio and start to put in the information. We know that our sample size is n, that the mean of our sample is 33, and that the standard deviation of our sample is 16. 
remember that our confidence level, we wanted to have 80%, so we'll define conf to be 0.8. Now our estimate for the standard deviation was going to be the standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root of n. Because we have to use s, the standard deviation of the sample, instead of the population standard deviation, we're going to need to use a t distribution. So we could find that t value, which is going to tell us the number of standard deviations away from the mean we need to be, and uh, by, by this calculation as explained earlier. So the margin of error is going to be the SE, the estimate of the standard deviation, times that t. So once we highlight that value and run that calculation, we find that it's 5.36 something or another and we were supposed to round this to one decimal point, so that's 5.4. So if we take that mean of 33, plus or minus, minus will give us the lower bound of the confidence interval, and plus will give us the upper bound of the confidence interval. Okay, that's it.